Mike Tedeschi, Portfolio Manager over at Perspective Wealth Planning with this week's market breakdown video. We're going to take a look at the four main U.S. indexes, and we will also jump in and take a look at the U.S. dollar and commodities in today's video. And we will take a quick look at our breath readings as well. Let's jump right into it here. First and foremost, S&P 500 held the important level. Look, we laid this out. We talked about this zone right here as being a major area that the market needed a hold. Now, we dipped below it briefly and then closed it way back up here, which was fine. Traded down for the next couple of days, stayed inside this nice tight range. And over the last couple of sessions, we've really made a breakout and continue to push higher. S&P 500's gotten back up over that 4,500 zone, which this was the area that we were thinking we might run into kind of at resistance and maybe turn back down. So, so far, this has pushed and has done pretty well. Now, overnight, I'm recording this Thursday before the market opens. Some of the major tech companies reported, and the market didn't like necessarily what was said there. The S&P 500 is actually going to open right back up around that 4,500 zone. That's the level I would pay very close attention to. Um, we, As long as we stay over that, we are really in that 4,500 to 4,800 range, and that's what we really need to pay attention to there in on the S&P 500. The NASDAQ this morning is going to open up actually right around the 46,800 level. So um, it's going to open up somewhere around this zone in here. A lot weaker, did not get back up to this 15,600 area, which is really what we were looking for that push um, to get back up into its top box up here. So as long as, again, the NASDAQ holds at 14.4 and is below that 15.6, it's really just inside this zone. And where that next breakout goes uh, either up or down, we want to pay very close attention to it. The Dow held up fine. is actually going to open up flat. Um, the tech earnings did not hurt it. Um, and we are looking at that 36,000 level. That is the top end. And remember, this is actually trapped more in a long-term range for an entire year. It did a very good job of holding that important 3,300 level like it did last June. So while we had a look like we were going to really start continuing to push down, all of the indexes found that support and started to make that turn up, right, out of these three indexes. When we jump in and we take a look at the Russell, the Russell made that break below that range for last year, being the weakest, and we talk about how important this is in terms of gauging risk on, risk off behavior. But what I will say, this right here, last year's low, if I draw that out, that 1900 level is actually where it held. So there's there was that bottom end here, which is, as you can see, a box up here and then a box underneath. They're both about the same size range. So when we broke down, we fell about an equal distance, held, and started to turn back up. 2100, 1900, those are the key levels in on the Russell. Underneath 1900, we're in a lot of trouble, I think, as that risk on environment continues to fall apart. Back up over 2100, we can look at this as a false breakout. And then we can also look at this as a false breakdown if it gets back into this range and more sideways kind of chop here for a while, which is perfectly fine price action. All right. So even though it looks like the Russell really fell apart, it did find that last key level of support, which was the low from last year, and that's where it held. Now, when we jump in here and take a look at the U.S. dollar, the U.S. dollar looked like it was going to get over that 97 zone and continue to push. It stayed over that for all of one day and then fell back down. This can be looked at as a potential false break over that 97, but we talk about resistance is not a number it's a zone and this zone is really 97 to 98 and that's that area from last june it was really really important i'm sorry two junes ago it was really really important where we had that breakdown right that is still acting as that overhead resistance here and we've fallen back down we're right in that key middle zone right and so we can see there is a lot of chop in a lot of these charts we get that breakdown looks like we're going to keep heading lower then we get that breakout and then it immediately fails and where are we we're still right in the same spot we've been for the last three months we've just done it with a lot of volatility and a lot of change of direction over a quick period of time normal comments still apply here to the u.s dollar over that 97 98 zone that's going to be a headwind for those commodities if this continues to weaken it's going to be a tailwind for commodities now, we look at gold. Gold is really fighting at that 1800 level. This has done absolutely nothing since last June at this point in time. It's pretty much that same exact spot. This market, again, just kind of trades sideways after such a huge run up before that. This could be normal price action digestion, but we need to see a follow through move in either direction, up or down. 
Uh, silver had that big push back to 25, fell back down to 22. It's trapped in that 25 to 22 zone. That's where it's been basically since last July. And it keeps hitting on the bottom end of this zone. And, you know, the more times you test support, the higher likelihood it's going to break. It hasn't happened yet. But if we fall underneath of that low from December, we're probably going back to the mid-19s on silver. Copper. For an entire year, pretty much trade, hanging out right around that 450 zone. A little bit up, a little bit below it, but right there in at that 450 zone. And that's where it continues to stay. We take a look in at Palladium. Palladium's had quite a comeback. It was the, the undisputed leader for a number of years. Then it was the weakest since the middle of last year. Now it's starting to act much stronger than its counterparts. Uh, we take a look in at Platinum. Platinum's holding up over 1,000, which is good, but it's trapped in between a 900 and 1,100 zone, and it's been in there since last June as well, so not a whole lot in the metal space. Oil's the interesting area of this market, right? That area has performed the best year to date. And right, we take a look at the major components of like the S&P 500 and the Dow. We've seen the oil names do and energy names do the best thus far. 85 was that breakout zone. So we have pushed and we're now you know, trying to get over that 90. And you can see we're just slightly grinding higher. So that is pretty good price action. We know when we look at this, we run into some major resistance back around that 95 to that 100 zone from a number of years back. And that gas is again just had some incredible moves yesterday a 16% day higher to try to close over that important multi-year 550 zone that we've talked about many many times here's that box it got just up above it and then today we're now down 12% this has given back the entire move once again that gas is extremely volatile we fell all the way to the support at 350 we bounced all the way to the top of the box of resistance at 550 and now we're right back in the middle towards that 480 zone this is going to be important if that gas can't hold 480 it falls back into this range where 350 becomes back uh in play i really want to jump in and take a look at the nasdaq and see the stocks that are above its 200 day moving average we've talked a lot about that we know that we had this pattern set up here right from last August, we basically found support right at that 50% line, and we kept bouncing up. And look what was happening, right? We were making lower highs, right? So we can analyze this the same way that we can um, analyze a stock chart. We have continued to make lower highs, and then we had that major breakdown where we got to about 25% of NASDAQ stocks were above their 200-day moving average, so 75% below. And we've had a really, really strong, incredible bounce off of that capitulatory action that we saw a week or so ago. But what are we running into, right? We're running into the underside of what was once support and now is going to act as resistance. How this acts here is important. And what we saw from some of the large tech companies last night, this is probably going to turn back down here over the course of the day or so. Um, as that area gets hit. That is not a good spot to fail. We really want to get back up over that 50 zone. We get back over that 50 zone, we get into much healthier markets. And you can look here over the last three years, below 50 is where bad things happen, right? And even if you go back to the coronavirus low, we fell down, we made a bounce, we failed at 50, and then we rolled back over. That's not what we want to see here. And so paying attention to the percentage of stocks that are above their 200-day moving average on the NASDAQ right here is something you definitely want to be paying close attention to. As always, I hope you guys found this information useful. I put this out every week, and if you guys have any questions, you want to ask me anything about the market, feel free to reach out at mtedeski at perspectiveofplaying.com, or you can reach me at 814-580-9881. hope you guys stay safe out there. I will see you guys next week. Take care.